Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan Moore from Stockholm Supply. Um, today uh, we're going to be talking about pinned versus pinless saw blades. What's the difference and what's the differences mean? So this right here is a pinned scroll saw blade. So you'll notice there's a pin that runs through the blade and that's what it attaches it to the blade clamp. Now this guy here is a pinless blade and you'll notice there is no pin that runs through the blade. Um, so a lot of the older scroll saws like this old Delta will be strictly pinned blades, take strictly pinned blades. Um, this Rikon here takes both pinned and pinless, where this Hegner, which is pretty much top of the heap, will take strictly pinless blades. Um, so, obviously, as you can see, with that pinned blade, it's um, got that pin that runs through it, it's significantly bigger. Um, you'll never be able to get as fine a blade with a pinned blade as you will with a pinless blade. Um, if you're doing a lot of fret work, you always have to drill a bigger hole to accommodate for that pinned. Um, now, when you're attaching a pinned blade to a scroll saw, one thing that is kind of interesting about these is on most pinned scroll saw blade holders, you can put it one direction or the other. So you could set that scroll saw blade up this direction, and you could use it, I guess, more like a bandsaw. Um, so it, it just gives you a little bit of a different direction to cut. Now, um, they're about, I would say pinned blades are about as difficult to put in, depending on the saw, as a pinless blade. This one's a little bit challenging because you got such a small hole. Um, then it goes in like that. So there's our, our uh, pinned blade. Now for a multi-machine here, that will do both. So this will take pinned or pinless. They come with these little holders. This guy right here. So that will hold one side of the blade. And then on the back of the saw here, it's got this little positioner that will get my proper blade length here. Um, so it can be somewhat finicky to use to attach an actual pinless blade, but it's definitely feasible. Um, so that will go in there like so, and then you get your little Allen key, and you just tighten this little clamp up. So then this guy, um, compared to that little Delta, it's kind of nice because you got this great big hole here, so you can see what you're doing. Um, so that will go, make sure we have this the right direction. That will, this little bar on the back will hook on the, on the bottom clamp. And then same thing on the top, just like that. And then you tighten it up at the back here. Now the one thing about both these two saws, and with pinned blades in general, is you have to re-tighten it every time to get your tension. So you have to re-tension it every time. Now a Hagner machine's a lot different. Um, so this is a pinless blade, um, so when you're putting in the bottom, you just put her in like that. If you go down here, underneath the saw, you got a slot that goes all the way through. And then this will just fit in there like that. It gets clipped in, so it doesn't fall out. And then on the top, this will just go down, there's a stop right there. That will lock in, and then you clamp. Now the cool thing about that, every time you tighten and loosen it, it'll go back to the exact same tension every time. So, obviously with a higher end saw, it's significantly easier to change a blade. Um, whether a pinned blade or a pinless blade is better, I would say a pinless blade, if you can get a scroll saw that will take pinless blades, is better because you got a lot more options for blades and they're a lot easier to find. So if you can, get a pinless scroll saw. That will, well, a scroll saw that will take pinless blades. So, yeah, um, if anybody else has any questions, you can email me at info at Make sure you add me on Instagram, and thank you guys for watching.